So <clears throat> I saw today on, on the birthday of Anthony, Anthony Gaudi, not to talk about his, um, you know, large body of work, but about a segment of his work, which I think is provocative and uh, is provocative uh, for various, for several reasons. Uh, these ceramic tiles that he uses in his work, I think are very inspiring because of their color, because of the patterns, because of the freedom with which they are uh, employed in the work. So in themselves, they are kind of bi-dimensional works of a plastic nature, kind of like paintings, if you want. And they are magnificent. And I, I think for those of us who are trained or uh, accustomed to only work with white walls and also in a very rigid way, I think uh, these uh, so-called fragments from Antoni Gaudi uh, invite us to, to a, different, a different world almost. Uh, with freedom, with color, with uh, expression, uh, with a lyricism which we, we still are uh, afraid to, to assume. And I wonder why. I mean, why is it that today there are no buildings which have so much richness? I mean, here I'm talking about the small fragment of a large work and one of many works. But look at look at how much richness it is right here. You know, you can contemplate this, this fragment and find satisfaction and find inspiration because you find beauty. Why is it that we don't employ color? Why is it that we don't employ ceramics, meaning clay? Because uh, they are very important because they, they add that earthly quality that is um, a positive quality. And uh, also you can manifest yourself artistically. So the architect Antoni Gaudi was not afraid at all to uh, 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 you know, add to his buildings something which without would have, would have, would have meant a great loss. Uh, he even added you know, uh, plates and some of the mosaics he created are made with broken plates. Why not? Break some plates yourselves. Go to a flea market, buy plates, and uh, employ them on, in a building. Not to copy Gaudi, but to express yourself through color. It's also the idea of a shard, of a fragment, which is um, probably uh, interesting to explore us uh, these days. Uh, so that the, 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 they might appear to be related somehow to deconstruction. Well, it is the deconstruction of the plates, but with those uh, fragments, you create something new. Now, compare this with a white wall, if you can. The white well wall says nothing. This one does say something. And uh, even if it doesn't narrate anything, it, it, uh, it engages the eye at an aesthetical level, which is uh, important. Almost no architect today would think of it employing fragments of ceramics the way he did it. And I think uh, now, yes, maybe if the whole world was covered with tiles like this, maybe it would have been problematic, but uh, we are far from that situation. There is a painter in the United States who found inspiration in Gaudi, Julia Schnabel, and he actually painted huge canvases where he also used broken plates to attach them to the canvases. He also became a very famous uh, film, uh, film director. He had a huge success. 
Julian Schnabel. But this is Gaudi, Antoni Gaudi. We have to escape the narrow functionalism that we are trapped in. We have to escape it. It's, it's, it's deadly. It is simply deadly. I mean, there are so many other ways to do architecture. Why don't we do it in one of those so many other ways? Why? And this is also about sustainability, is it not? I mean, you, you, you almost go to the garbage can and you find some fragments of something and employ, give a new life through imagination. There is still a lot to learn from the Antoni Gaudi. And these are modern works. I mean, you know, if you create an artwork like what we see here, you will say, wow, you know, it's a good, uh, it's a good artwork. But this is a small fragment of, uh, of one, only one building. But in itself, in its by dimensionality, is is uh, aesthetically uh, coherent and uh, convincing, and inviting, and enticing. Now, maybe this is in terms of surface uh, dimensions. Maybe I don't know. Um, three feet by uh, two feet and a half or you know one meter by uh, 70 centimeters but look you know in this surface something happens so i i urge you actually it's more than i i, I suggest to you i urge you to explore other ways to, 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 to contribute to architecture beyond the, the, the sterility and the frigidity of the white walls. I'm tired of them. I'm really tired of them. And I'm tired of that narrow functionalism that was maybe valid uh, 100 years ago, but not now. Not now. The ornament is coming back to architecture and we still don't even use the word. There is, there is playfulness here, no? Uh, not just the architect who envisioned this, but also the craftsman or the person who did this, you know, spontaneously. Obviously, Antoni Gaudi didn't instruct everyone where to place each specific piece. No, it allowed for the spontaneity of the, of the, uh, of the worker to manifest itself creatively. So in this way, the joy was not only to uh, belonging to Antoni Gaudi, to the architect, but also to the person who playfully, you know, uh, contributed with his or her own creativity. This is also important because if you make a project uh, in whatever way you make it, and then you send it to the construction workers, and they they have to build it exactly as the drawing says, and they cannot manifest their spontaneity and their creativity at all. You can imagine that worker is frustrated. Uh, the, the worker doesn't contribute joyously to the creation, but in this case, they did. I mean, this in itself, just, just like this, is a very nice modern, if we have to call it so, artwork. And I imagine those who attach these pieces, these plates to the wall, were gratified 
and they had joy and they loved it. They liked what they did because it included color and it, you know, it, it was about aesthetics. It was about beauty. How many workers on construction sites today have that pleasure and that chance to manifest themselves, not the architect's whim, but their own whim. They don't have, we don't think of the worker, that the worker, you know, is also a human being with maybe hidden artistic impulses with imagination. In what way does the so-called worker uh, express them? We don't give him or her a chance, really. They have to uh, at literum uh, translate the drawing into a building, that's it. So they are just tools. In this case, they are more than tools. They are themselves creators. And the architect only provided a strategy, no more than a strategy, you know. And, and within that strategy, those who glued uh, these pieces to, to the wall uh, were free. I don't know if there are many architects in the world where you take a square meter of a fragment of their buildings and you can create a PowerPoint presentation just with such, you know, small parts of their buildings. But in the case of Gaudi, I mean, I, I didn't even show his buildings. Well, I, I, I show just a fragment of his buildings and there is still a, a richness, a lot. And here it is suggested a strategy that is, that is very relevant to our time because it is about reusing, you know, uh, recycling. We can recycle so many things. Think about innovative ways to recycle what is around us and it is abandoned. You can, you can create significantly without big expenditures. It's really about enviere, about rebirth. Who would have thought to incorporate broken plates into the walls of the building? Well, he did, and bravo to him. Okay, now we go to, um, so happy birthday, Antoni Gaudi. Uh, we go to Harry Seidler. Uh, an accomplished, very accomplished Australian architect. He was actually born in Vienna in Austria and then he emigrated, he emigrated because of the war and uh, we didn't first go to Australia, but in the end, he arrived in Australia. So Harry Seidler was an Austrian born Australian architect who is considered to be one of the leading exponents of modernism methodology in Australia and the first architect to fully express the principles of the Bauhaus in Australia. Well, this is a little bit uh, forcing the issue because actually he was uh, uh, only 10 years old when the Bauhaus closed down in 1933. So 
he is associated somehow with the Bauhaus, but he never studied there. And as I said, he was only 10 years old when the Bauhaus closed, closed down in 1933. Seidler designed more than 180 buildings and he received much recognition for his contribution to the architecture of Australia. Seidler consistently won architectural awards every decade throughout his Australian career uh, of almost 58 years across the varied uh, categories. His residential work from the 50s, his commercial work from 1964, and his public commissions from the 1970s. He was a controversial figure throughout his long career as he regularly publicly criticized planning authorities and the planning system in Sydney. Here is a picture with uh, Gropius. He's on the right, Walter Gropius on the left. Uh, this was the man. Fortunately for him, he was born uh, rich and uh, he brought all his family to Australia and he built a house for every member of his family. Nineteen forty-eight, nineteen fifty. already, this is a house he built for his parents, the Rose Seidler house. Um, and so 1948, 1950, the war just ended. And yes, it is a modern uh, house uh, through and through. It's a good building. And just like in the case of Gaudi, here we have large, uh, uh, you know, murals, part of the part of the building, which is also nice. So I suggest to you, if you have a commission for a house, okay, make your white walls, but invite an artist to contribute, bring color in, bring different shapes, bring different imaginations. Is important. You know, without that mural on the left the building would have been less interesting in this case. Another house for another member of his family, uh, Julian Rose House. Not bad. Even with the standards of today, if you would do such a house today, it would be immediately published on Arch Daily and other sites. <clears throat> I suggest to you to uh, uh, open and study the works published on this uh, website uh, of houses is actually uh, the work of a Romanian architect. He, uh, he created this very useful uh, website where you can see the so-called forgotten houses, modern houses, 
but very important um, uh, architectures. It's an architect from Suchava. So th this is the website offhouses.com. Harry Cyber in uh, Australia. The structure of the building. Another house for another member of his family, the Marcus Seidler house. Again, the, the presence of the mural, which again uh, is important. A tower, 1958-1961, Sydney. <clears throat> He'll be built many, many works. Um, you see the opera of John Hudson here. Another tower, different from the previous one, Australia Square Tower. Uh, square, but it's, it's the Australia Square. The tower is not square, it's round. It's a cylinder.
<clears throat> major major construction uh, constructive construction uh, efforts On this one, I, I didn't find pictures. Now, the, the his own house, Harry and Penelope, his his wife. This is the Seidler, Harry Seidler's house, his own. A large house. Very different from Antoni Gaudi, indeed. Quite, uh, quite monumental for a private home. Uh, luxury apartments, uh, building in Acapulco.
<clears throat> now this is a large uh, office building uh, in Canberra. You will see it in the, in the plan, it's quite big. Not so much vertically, but horizontally. It's a citadel. I mean, look at even these are large buildings, but uh, the one by Seidler is uh, remarkably big. Okay, now the embassy of Australia in Paris, uh, France Interesting the concrete work here. Okay, uh, Dina Felicire, uh, let's see. Uh, we are only Romanians here, so, so Vorbesc Românește acum. Uh, 